Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a Q&A episode, so let's actually get right to it, shall we? Uh, Woot Stat Slachter. <clears throat> so you got a couple of five questions for me, and I'll actually get them get them answered for you. So, <clears throat> so here we go. Who will win a Who would win a quadrupe, quadrupedal Spinosaurus or a Torvosaurus? Uh, that one is that's gonna be pretty tough. Um, I would actually probably go. Because uh, I think in terms of what type of environment uh, you would actually be in, uh, like say if it was like say near water, Spinosaurus would actually be uh, the one to win. But if it was on land, then I would say Torvosaurus. But of course, these two dinosaurs never met each other, and they lived in two different periods of time, and also they're from separate continents as well. But uh, I would say like it, this depends on what kind of environment you're actually going to be talking about. Um, uh, for that and then so other ones who would win Torvosaurus or Megaraptor um, let's see Torvosaurus is bigger than Megaraptor and so uh, size is going to matter on that but I would think uh, in terms of weaponry I think Mega Megaraptor has got the better weaponry it's got the bigger claws it's got a pretty good amount of teeth and so I'd probably go Megaraptor on this one because I think Megaraptor would be faster and also would actually see the weaker points of Torvosaurus, whereas Torvosaurus would not have a weak, would not have a very strong bite at all. And then, and then uh, your your last one, Quadrupedal Spinosaurus or Megaraptor. Uh, just depends on what kind of environment. And so, uh, water Spinosaurus, Me land Megaraptor, and so that would, that would give you right there. All right, Benjamin from Hong Kong is out. So you got a bunch of questions here, so I'll try to get a few of them as much as I can. And so, is Allosaurus the fastest of all large Jurassic predatory dinosaurs? In terms of large predatory dinosaurs, yes. I would actually say it is one of the fastest. It could be between 20 to 25 miles per hour. So that would actually be a pretty good pretty good speed for Allosaurus. Is Acrocanthosaurus the biggest of the early Cretaceous theropods? No, uh, it would actually not be the biggest. Um, if you're talking about the early Cretaceous types of dinosaurs, uh, I would say it would actually have to be like Carcharodontosaurus or otherwise um, Giganotosaurus, because those would actually be the ones that would actually be considered larger than Acrocanthosaurus. Does the skull of Baryonyx look like a gharial? No. Because uh, gharials don't actually, because the gharials have that little like uh, boss uh, thing on their snout, the, mainly the males, uh, whereas uh, baryonyx does not have that, and so I would say that uh, baryonyx just looks like a basic spinosaur uh, type of skull, elongated snout, long teeth, cone-shaped teeth, a uh, little bit of like a kind of like a like a dip in the skull. Uh, where like you kind of see where the teeth kind of kind of kind of be a little bit smaller in that little notch uh, in the skull but so I would say no it, it the spinosaur skulls do look like crocodilian skulls but a lot of them don't even look like a lot of uh, actual crocodilian skulls I'd say that some of them actually just kind of actually have the crocodilian like teeth but they just don't look like a crocodilian type of skull and uh, can't, and uh, how come Camptosaurus did not appear in Walking with Dinosaurs, Jurassic Fight Club, or when Dinosaurs from America? Basic uh, thing is, is that I uh, they didn't know how a lot of scientists think it wasn't going to be a well-recognized dinosaur for people to understand, and so I think that's why it wasn't actually featured in those types of series. But I mean, it was featured in. Uh, uh, Planet Dinosaur, the BBC, BBC um, uh, show that was actually uh, done like uh, several years ago, but uh, a lot of some of that is actually kind of uh, dated already, and so it would actually uh, it wouldn't be surprising that like a lot of scientists came out of the war came out and actually said like a lot of that stuff is dated, even though at that time it was actually very well done, and so. Uh, all I can say is, is that it probably was not uh, a lot of the like writers and even like uh, the producers and some of the uh, probably just thought it wasn't going to be a very well-known dinosaur for people to actually 
you kind of actually get you kind of get excited about. All right, Jody from Kentucky. Uh, the sauropods have large hearts. Uh, in a certain way, I would think so. Um, but it's not like, say, because you see, that was a huge question in uh, uh, Jurassic CSI, uh, the National Geographic uh, show that actually had <clears throat> uh, Phil Manning uh, on there uh, kind of discussing about sauropods. And that question actually did come up did sauropods have large hearts? And uh, I would say that they probably did. It's just that it probably was not as large as what we actually think it is. And so it wouldn't be large as, like, say, like a blue whale's heart, because those are actually, because a blue whale's heart is really, really massive. If you, if anybody look on the internet and actually uh, look up uh, uh, blue whale hearts, uh, you would actually see how large uh, the blue whale heart really is. And so you actually get to see uh, how big that really is compared to all the people that are actually kind of um, like studying that heart. And But even though we have no idea what how big uh, a heart could really be, uh, for sauropods and most of mostly other predatory dinosaur and other types of dinosaurs as well because a lot of times the hearts don't a lot of the time hearts don't act, the soft tissues don't fossilize and so we will never know uh, what the shape of the heart would actually be and uh, but a lot of scientists are actually thinking it probably would actually be a four chambered heart uh, like in birds and mammals and so that could actually possibly be the case is that it probably had a four chambered heart but we don't know how big it really is and so that would actually uh, leave it at that and then Brendan from Morris New York do you still believe Tyrannosaurids, Allosaurids, Spinosaurids, Cricardontosaurids, and Abelosaurids have feathers, scales, or somewhere in between? Well I kind of do and you see um, the I think Spinosaurs and Abelosaurs did not have feathers. I think those things actually probably had uh, just plain scales, just plain scales. Because if you're actually kind of in that type of environments where it's like really warm and dry and somewhat humid, uh, you're actually not going to need the feathers, especially with Spinosaurus. If being that large, you don't need uh, feathers that much. Maybe the young ones did have a bit of the. Uh, primitive feathers but probably would not see it in the adults and the same thing with the abelosaurids uh carcardontosaurids and allosaurs i think some allosaurs did in the in, i would say allosaurids uh probably had like feathers when they were like younglings same thing with like uh uh the carcardontosaurids and then when they became adults they actually uh shed those off as for tyrannosaurids yes because there is evidence uh, for Tyrannosaurus uh, having feathers, especially like D Long, Guan Long, and Eutyrannus. And so those are the Tyrannosaurus that actually had feathers. I think Proto Proceratosaurus probably had some. I would think some of the other small to medium sized Tyrannosaurus did. Uh, when you get to the large Tyrannosaurus, I would say they're probably uh, somewhere in between. Uh, but a lot of the time, it's all about. Uh, the rock formation, do they actually, does that rock formation actually fossilize the feathers very well? And like say in case of Tyrannosaurus rex, uh, in the Hell Creek formation and the Lance formation, does not preserve feathers very well. It's because the rock formation does not support uh, the preservation necessary uh, to actually have the feathers. So. I do believe Tyrannos, I believe Tyrannosaurus Rex did have feathers when they were very young, so from hatchling, probably close to the teenage years, and probably when they got to their teenage years, uh, started shedding some of those feathers off, uh, mainly in the belly region and the underbelly, basically in the belly, underbelly region and some parts of the legs. Um, I would say that Tyrannosaurus did have feathers. It's just basically the uh, quill-like structures of the feathers, mainly going from the back of the head all the way towards. Uh, the base of the tail and I wouldn't be surprised the males actually had some feathers on the tip of the tail and also on the arms but we still don't know we still don't know and so uh, I would say that Tyrannosaurs were more likely to have feathers Allosaurids and Carcardontosaurids probably when they were hatchlings and then they shed them off 
uh, when they got uh, big enough to actually uh, be able to actually uh, take in their body, they actually uh, be warm enough to actually not use them. And Spinosaurus and Abelosaurus did not have them. And so that I would actually leave it at that with that one. All right, that's it for now. Now next week would actually be a special episode to let you guys know probably sometime this weekend of what prehistoric animal I'm going to talk about. So stay tuned for that. And uh, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. As well on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you actually post your questions on the wall or in the comment section. Remember, keep your questions short to the point. And also for you YouTubers out there, feel free to like, subscribe, and also... Feel free to put your questions in the comments section. I read them all. I take them uh, very. I, I do actually read them. Uh, very do read them. And so uh, feel free to leave your questions in the comments section. Like I said before, mm -hmm. keep your questions short to the point, and also uh, make sure that uh, that it's actually uh, uh, very good for me to read and very good for me to uh, know what you're talking about. But at least uh, at least I know what you're. And at least some of you actually have been giving me some pretty good questions. But, but and so YouTubers out there, feel free to do that. And also, you can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of people around you. Notice if you're younger people out there, make sure you're listening to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education. So with a good education, it's a good ed you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.